Hi everyone, I'm John Johannes. I am game director on Hi-Fi Rush at Tango Gameworks. You've actually created this game starting from 2017, so how did you keep this game a secret from then up till now and its big surprise launch? Uh... Honestly, I don't know. I thank everyone who knew about it but didn't talk about it. That was, that, I think that was the secret. I mean, later on when we were getting close to finish, we kind of had to tell people, hey, don't, don't, don't spoil it, you know. But, um, you know, early on when the game's in development, I think people are very kind and they don't uh, talk about the game, um, especially when you don't know what's going to happen to it. So I, I would say it was half a miracle that it didn't leak or something like that, but a lot of people were involved with it so <laughs> yes one of them is actually like a malaysian company i know lemon sky studios yes yes they're uh they contributed so much to help um flesh out our our character design and our boss designs and things like that um so they've been immensely immensely helpful with our our 2d art were there like any characters okay because you've got chai you've got peppermint you've got macaron how did the naming convention started like was it pre-production already settled down or was it like a very last minute thing? No, I, early on, they were kind of almost like temp names because I just wanted something that felt fun um, and not grounded in, oh, these are American names or these are, uh, you know, or, or I really kind of identifying like a, a place in the real world. It was supposed to be its own world. So uh, I just kind of wrote down lists of almost like it's, I know it's food items or, or spices or things like that, but things where it doesn't, you know it, but it doesn't really feel identified to a certain culture, maybe. They were always temp names, and I we were always in the document. It was like, like macaron temp name, because I thought people would think it, would, it just wouldn't fit. But then people just got used to calling it that, so we just kept it. <laughs> yeah. So what inspired Tango Gameworks to do something non-horror for a change? Was it more like a change of pace? Or was that just something you were pushing? You were pushing this idea forward, and you know, making sure that it gets done. I had this idea for a long time. This, you know, this idea of this sort of like action game where everything is synced up to the to the music, and everything that we had made up until the Evil Thing Two was you know horror game. So it's a complete polar opposite to everything that we've done, and. In, in, like half of me was like, oh, we, you know, we're, we've, we're kind of in this sort of very mature zone. It's very, it's going to be very hard to do it. But at the same time, I know that uh, Mikami-san's vision for the studio was more of experimenting with ideas, trying new ideas and things like that. So coming after four titles and we knew that Ghostwire Tokyo was the next line, game that we was, was up for development, which was another sort of uh, darker tone game, I just kind of felt like it was a good the right time to pitch this idea for a colorful rhythm action game that I, very, I had a strong vision for it so that I think I pushed it hard enough that it wasn't just kind of like a surface level idea like oh I just want to do something fun it was more like I have this I have this idea that I think could work that's original um, but it also a little bit is like for like a palate cleanser for the studio and and some people as well we're con constantly working on a horror game to give them something as a like a refresh try something new um, so that's how, how it kind of came along I'm just also curious about like um, the art style and also how you got everything to sync up with the soundtrack. Was there like a programming trick in particular that you that your team did? Because when I look at it, when I play it, I mean, apart from the whole beautiful Joe Jet Set Radio vibe, I'm getting the 2000s action game vibe thing that's going on. You've kind of actually did something really like people actually talk about it, but never actually could pull it off like proper, which is having the entire background and the characters just sync up to the music. So what was the thought process in getting all that minuscule detail done down to a T? Uh, yeah, well, it's kind of like a two-part question, right? So if we talk about the art style, um, obviously the games that you mentioned were, were influences, but we knew we didn't want to just copy them and just be like, okay, it's that, it's the same exact thing. But we wanted people to feel like it was like almost like a you know like in the same spirit as that. So we worked really hard to take different references, but then curate it, the the visual identity to kind of make it feel like its own. Um, I kind of like the we use these like keywords as uh, 
colorful, clean, and sharp is like is like the key words for our visual content. But we also wanted to make sure that it was like some a nice hybrid that felt like a made in Japan American comic almost like type feel. So there was we had this this that that feeling that we went for originally, and obviously we just kept building onto it to find really get our vision. But um, that uh, was kind of its its own thing that we wanted to sort of resemble things, but not copy. Um, and as for like the rhythm element, that was something that was the, one of the first things that we knew we had to do is so that was part of like my when we first started prototyping the game, we needed to make a programming system that everything was locked to the music track and all animations and everything would sync to it. So uh, a lot of like hand keyed animations, but we made sure that depending on the speed of the song, things would sync up appropriately to like land on the beat. And that was the most important thing of things like landing on the beat and not things just moving in general. Um, so that took a lot of work on the back end uh, from a technical perspective to get that to work. It's something that no one had any experience doing in our studio. So it was kind of like relearning everything and relearning how we made animation and 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 level design and 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 even the environment art of how to place things to make it look like it's not too distracting but just creates a nice vibe yeah it was just a lot of trial and error and work to get it to to look like that yeah what was the thought process in balancing the difficulty in having players no rhythm and have and also you know casual players who never played a rhythm game in their lives like how do you achieve that balance especially when it comes to play testing and getting the action down pat and the difficulty especially with the last boss you fight oh yeah <laughs> um another two-part question i guess but yeah so the the it really began with the idea of of accessibility um to begin with because we knew that if it was a very complicated rhythm game people can be turned off by, I don't have any rhythm sense, I can't play this game. So that's where the sort of like the the automatic syncing things to the beat came in. And it was a lot of sort of internal back and forth where even at a concept level, some people thought it would be, it would be un unrewarding because you're not rewarded for, you know, playing to the beats. So it should be like when you don't press a button an attack shouldn't come out. Um, and that's totally understandable from a game perspective. But I really was aiming for something that even if you weren't very good in rhythm, we do the hard work for you on the back end. So we're really helping you out and making sure that it syncs so you feel like you're playing to the beat. So we're not really like lying to you because the whole idea is that things sync up to the beat, but we're giving you the opportunity to uh, find that beat always in the game. So if the attacks hit on the beat, if you want to combo, just listen to where your attacks are landing to just continuously press the button. And that was very important that we were playing when we were testing the game that we were making the tutorials correctly and explaining it correctly so people would understand that you, you don't have to worry too much about it you don't have to take it over think of it more of an action game than a rhythm game but if you really focus on the rhythm as well you can take it a step further and it's a very deep game and then of course as you make a game like this you get used to the mechanics and you just kind of like escalate things so if you want to talk about like the last boss, obviously that's like the pinnacle of everything you've learned up in the game, up in the game to like create this like ultimate, ultimate experience of attacks that sync to the beat, but also sync with a song track that's playing in the background, um, combining all elements of like your partner usage, your parrying, and what we think is just like an epic fight in general. And that was like just something that we knew that we wanted to do and pull off kind of like yeah like builds up to this thing it's like we're just slowly training you to build up but i think that most players will finish the game and then it almost like clicks with them even further and then we'll they'll go back to the beginning and they're like and they just keep it's almost like the first the first place is like a tutorial in a sense in a way and then they can go back and then they can like really get in there and deep and and, and play with the mechanics and find all this deep stuff that we put in there as well you've clearly seen like the pc steam like all the user reviews are like, I think, overwhelmingly positive. Like, a very yeah, chunk it's of insane. It. Um, yeah, and we're amazed by that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. I like to ask, how do you personally feel about the game outperforming on its surprise debut? And and you know, having this sort of thing can be like a fifty-fifty chance. I mean, it could backfire. Like, why take that chance from 
a business perspective or from a director's perspective? Uh, well, the choice to do that was I have to give the the props to our marketing and PR team um, for deciding to go in that direction, as seeing that it was a game that people saw, they wanted to play immediately, um, it just looked fun. So that sort of putting it out there and letting people be able to play, especially with Game Pass, as an opportunity to just jump in and play it, was just felt like a good match, um, especially from a marketing perspective. Is something new, something that people might question, but the questions would go away as soon as they played the game. From a developer perspective, obviously it was very nerve wracking because um, we're looking at it from, you know, we're, we believe in the game, we want to show it off, we think it's so cool, we want to show it off, but we have to hold off on it. And then when you don't, you haven't spoken about it for so long and then you're, you see it coming and you're, it's going to shadow drop, you get really nervous. Are they going to like it? Is it going to work? Like you said, there's a risk involved. What if it doesn't take off? Like, and so you start freaking out. You think about all the possibilities. So um, we were freaking out internally, uh, but you know, marketing stayed to their vision of we think this is a, a even though there is a risk attached to it, we think that this will succeed. Um, so, and it seems to have done better than we could have imagined. So, uh, yeah, it worked out well. So I gotta ask: um, Have you heard of a game called No Straight Roads by any chance? I have heard of it. Um, I know that it, it when we were developing our game, it popped up as saying, hey, there's another game that's doing rhythm action. And I at this point, we already had our game play like solidified. And people were like, should we check it out? And I'm like, we already, we already know what we're doing. It's like, whatever they're doing, it's like, we shouldn't like play off each other. Just like, like, let it be, you know, like, uh, not in a bad way. It's like, whatever they're doing, it's like, don't let that kind of influence what we're doing. Because we didn't feel like we wanted to either copy something or, or you know, try to one-up somebody in that way either. And then later on in development, we took a look at it and realized that I think we were going for a, a different type of, while they were rhythm action games, I think they were kind of different ends of the spectrum in terms of what they were going for. So, well, I may, maybe you can pick, pick comparisons to like our art style or something like that i'm glad that those two options exist for players who like this type of experience that they are two different experiences that people can play oh and i also gotta ask um there was actually a okay i think it was the eighth chapter after um corsica stage the one where you have to invade um mimosa's uh party basically so yeah, at yeah. the start when you're on the rooftop when chai is on the rooftop there's actually like a garden and a globe that kind of reminds me of how Vinyl City's uh, starting area looks like. I mean, is it coincidence? Have you seen it before? Or it could be like a tribute that you guys did somehow? Uh, I don't fix I mean, I didn't do art artistically design that. Um, I know the person who designed it, it was more of a... I think they referenced... If you've ever been to Universal Studios, especially Universal Studios Japan. Okay, Universal Studios Japan, yes. They have like a globe with like this, uh, you know, with the lines around it showing all the interconnected things. Yep. I know that that's what they told me that they're like, it'd be cool as if we had this like Universal Studios feel because it feels like a theme park because you uh, see like Ferris wheels in the backgrounds and things like that. So that's what I was told. Uh, <laughs> given that the game has already come out and whatnot, and again, it's way too soon to talk about future plans and all that. But would Hi-Fi Rush be something Tango Gameworks want to revisit six months or eight months down the line? Like, would you consider planning more content in the far, far, far future, despite the game coming out literally days ago? Yeah, I, do. <laughs> I yeah, I always love how people ask this. It's like the moment that a game comes out. What are your plans? It's like first vacation and then think about it. Um, yeah, we don't have anything to announce yet. Obviously, we love the world that we built. We love the characters. Um, and so we're going to see how it performs, and then we'll take it from there. But uh, yeah, um, we don't have anything to announce just yet. Would you be, uh, would the team be open to future fan feedback? Like, would you be opening, like, maybe a Discord channel or, like, a Twitter page, taking in, like, suggestions or, you know, fan, basically, like, a community thing going on for Hi-Fi Rush? Uh, I think technically we do have a Discord page. Uh, I'm like the the worst in terms of Discord usage, so I'm not super familiar. But I know that we 
I saw even the account tweet that you can, you know, follow us on our Discord. So we do have that. Um, but again, like we always look for reactions of what people had difficulties playing with or what they what what parts they like really liked and things like that. So uh, we de- uh, like every game. We always look at what the fans think and what players look and expect from us. So uh, yeah, it's it's always there. You know, <laughs> every good and every bad. You know, <laughs> the bad hurts a little bit more, obviously, but when you see it. But um, we look at everything. So. All right, right. So one final message I want to say to new fans of action rhythm games and anyone who's currently playing Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, yeah, I know that it's um, it's a genre that exists. This sort of rhythm action or combination of music with other types of games. Um, I like to think we did something really, really awesome with it. Um, and I think we did something that was very, very accessible. So uh, don't be turned off by if it's either, you know, we do have a lower price point. Don't think it's like a, a small game. It, it's a, it is a very meaty and large game, which you can probably attest to <laughs> um, with lots of content. Um, and our quality is super high, but it's just an overall fun and positive experience that you can get from it. So even if you think that the game might not be for you you're not up you're not a good action player you're not a good rhythm game player it's like you shouldn't be worried and if you just want to have a good time and have fun then you should then you should play hi-fi rush